I think of a passage when in the New Testament, uh, Jesus is teaching and there's a, there's a bunch of kids around and you know, it could get ruckus even if there's a bunch of kids around or, or if my father's present. And uh, the disciples are about to you know, shoo the kids away and Jesus is like, no, bring them to me. Amen. And I look at that passage and it reminds me how important children are to our Savior, Jesus Christ, and how important it is to have them in church. Amen. In church so that they can hear the truth of God's Word and have a time that's set aside to worship Amen. our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray as we continue. Dear Lord God, we are thankful for this day. We are thankful for the truth that is found in Your Word. We are thankful that Jesus lived a life without sin so that He could be the perfect sacrifice for my sin, for our sin. We're thankful that He saw His glorification being on that rugged cross. We're also thankful that we serve a Savior who is living and risen, victorious over death and over sin. The prayer is at this time that His will would be done and the name of Jesus would be glorified through His people. In your name we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Our title today is Jesus the Teacher. Uh, the boys, uh, my boys will tell me oftentimes that everything is a teaching moment. Now, I don't know where they got that from uh, when we're you know, breaking stuff and setting things on fire at the house, but that's a different story. We're not talking about that today. Uh, but Jesus, so often, even people who didn't recognize Him as God's Son, even people who didn't recognize Him as the Messiah, the Savior, the King of the world, the universe, and, and I could go on, but you get it, right? Even though people didn't, not everyone recognized Him as that, many of those same people identified Him as a teacher. And oftentimes, that was the title when they would address Him, was what they would call Him, teacher. And so, in the passages that we're looking today in uh, the book of Mark, uh, we see Jesus taking some opportunities to teach. Uh, so often when He did teach, uh, He did so through parables. Uh, parables are those short stories that we can look at and then uh, turn and, and, and relate and find this life lesson in them. Uh, so often when He throws out a parable, uh, man, when you really, you know, at first you look at it, it's like, well, that's pretty basic. And then when you mull over it and you look at it, man, there's a lot of truth packed into that little story, right? Now, my father tells parables all the time, uh, but they usually have something to do with Carruthers and uh, how he's not allowed to go to Riverdale anymore, and I'm not even going to go into that topic because it has nothing to do with what we're talking about today. Does that make sense? However, when we look at God's Word, when we look at Jesus' physical ministry, man, it has everything to do with what we're doing today. And just a reminder, uh, starting in January, uh, we're walking through this little life book. There's more of it in the foyer, and uh, about uh, five pages a week. And so the scriptures that we were looking at last week are some of the scriptures that I'm going to be teaching on today. So we are in uh, the book of Mark, uh, chapter 4, and we'll be starting in verse 21, and it says this. He said to them, Do you bring a lamp? to put it under a bowl or a bed. Instead, don't you put it on a stand. For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed, and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out into the open. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Consider carefully what you hear, he continued. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you even more. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. I was looking at this scripture and, I mean, this is a passage, at least for me, I mean, it goes back to Sunday school as an elementary school kid. I remember this Bible story. And I remember the little song, right? This little light of mine. Hide under a bushel? No. 
right? And, was, and that, I always kind of looked at it very literally like that. And when you start thinking literally, we have to look at context, don't we? This passage is talking about a lamp. What do we think of today when we think of a lamp? It usually involves a light bulb that has a switch and is connected to, connect it to some form of electricity. Um, there's a candle in front of me. You notice I didn't say a candle burning in front of me because if it were, it put off a toxic, plasticky smoke. Uh, it's kind of a lamp, but in the reality, it has an LED bulb in it with batteries and it's just flickering. And let's see just how much heat does it produce. None. Okay, you could probably measure it if you had the right device. I was thinking about context. The lamp that they're referring to would have had a flame on it. The bed that they're referring to was probably literally laying on the ground. The basket that they're talking about, you know, you don't cover it up with a basket. The basket that he's referring to was probably not made out of plastic. Uh, it could have been ceramic. Uh, it might have been woven out of, uh, like, uh, uh, what do you call that? Plant stuff, right? You get it. Uh, but think about this. If you put a candle under your bed today, what happens? I heard someone say, it will catch on fire. And I was, I was reading this passage this week, last week, leading into today, and I was thinking, man, when you think about this lamp, which is representing the light of Jesus Christ, when you think about the concept, when you look at this parable, hiding the light of Jesus Christ, it's, that's dangerous. Trying to cover up His glory and His power is dangerous. When we look at the passes as it continued, it even said, you know, if you've got some, right, some light to share, and you share it, it's going to be magnified, it's going to be made even more, and, and if you don't, uh-oh, it gets to be less. We are called as a people, those of us who know Jesus as our Lord and Savior, to share the truth of Christ with others, to, I think as the old song goes, right, let that light shine. Sometimes we struggle here. Sometimes we struggle right here because, simply put, we don't know how to let that light shine. Well, what are some steps we can take to let that light shine? Be nice to other people. Isn't that a way to allow that light to shine? Being nice. Uh, to love. Oh my goodness, this is a hard one. To love your... Oh, it's hard to get out sometimes. You know, like if your neighbor's leaves are dropping leaves on your side of the fence, it's hard. Uh, or maybe if they've got like a whole bunch of old Jeeps parked out... Oh, wait, that's my house. <laughs> to love your neighbor as you love yourself. To love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. Think about it. Model peace, love, and joy in your life. Have forbearance and patience. These are ways to let that light shine. There's another way you can let that light shine as well. It could be Monday morning when you get to work. And I mean, I think there's a sporting event on uh, television later on today. Uh, that's going to be the big topic oftentimes. Uh, I know which team my dad, nephew, and brother-in-law want to have win, but I also know who my sister-in-law have wants to win, and, and that's a conflict. <laughs> I'm just telling you. What's common when you bump into people on Monday morning, whether it's at work or school or wherever you go? Hey, man, what'd you do last weekend? Right? It could be, ah, nothing. It could be, ah, I watched a game. It could be, ah, I went out to lunch. It could be, hey, I was hanging out with a bunch of friends and family. It could be a little closer to the truth. Man, I went to a little church in the ranchos. My friend's kids were getting baptized. It was, it was pretty impressive. And, and do you realize sharing a little bit of your experience with God, that's what it is, is another way to let that light shine. Amen. Another way to let that light shine is 
Maybe you've gone through a difficult time or you've had some crisis and a struggle and in the process somebody's like, man, that was terrible what you went through. I, I couldn't have survived it. How'd you survive? Usually we'd say, yeah, I, I survived because I'm tough, right? And usually maybe we'd say something like, well, just remember, men don't cry, but y'all, we bleed all over the place. The reality is sometimes it's clear and it leaks out of our face. It could be you say something like, I couldn't have made it through this on my own. I was drowning. And I'm so thankful that Jesus, my Savior, carried me. Right? Call it what it is. Carried me through it. I don't, I don't have any better explanation than that. I couldn't do it on my own. I was lost on my own. And Jesus saved me. Here's the reality. As believers, we cannot cover up the light of Jesus Christ. We have to let that light shine. It's so amazing and it's so powerful. Jesus is the light. He is the one that allows the light to shine into the darkness. And the reality is, some folks don't like the light. I'm going to tell you why. Scripture explains it in John chapter 3. Some folks don't like the light because their deeds are dark. And they don't want them brought into the light and exposed. It's what it is. Let's continue. And by the way, we're going to walk through like two or three parables today, okay? Verse 30. Again he said, What shall we say? The kingdom of God is like. Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It's like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the garden. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants. With such big branches that the birds of the air can perch on its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them. As much as they could understand. I like that. He said with these different parables, he spoke the word to them as much as they un could understand. Again, I, I, we say it all the time. Jesus is compassionate. And he sees us where we are. If you read this passage, he, it clearly tells us that he gave them enough. But not so much that they couldn't Take it, handle it, grasp it, understand it. We look at this mustard seed, and I remember, again, as a small child, of the church we attended in uh, Sebastopol, California, Hessel Union Church. I, think it, I don't know if it's named after the road that was there or if the road was named after the church. Uh, <laughs> but there it is. Uh, at Hessel Church, they had a building program going on. And part of their building program was this uh, mustard seed. Uh, I don't know what you want to call it, but that was the theme for their campaign was the mustard seed. And I remember uh, Pastor Ron Kundal explaining to us that the, the seed, the plant, the mustard plant that they're talking about in this passage uh, in Israel at this time, he described it as almost a tree. I, I don't know. This is, I'm, I'm relaying something that I heard when I was like eight. Okay? So you give me a break. And, and I, my thumbs are not green. They're brown. I'm doing the best I can with plant stuff, okay? But uh, Pastor Ron, uh, the way he described it was that that mustard seed was very tiny, and the plant that grew out of it was this large, like, bushy tree thing. Even the scripture describes that it, it, its branches uh, were, had strength and grew in such a way that, that birds could light on it, could land on it. Um, I won't tell you that part. The littlest thing... Think about it. The littlest thing through God's power can have the greatest effect. Things that have happened in our lives, things that we do every day that we don't even think about can have the greatest effect on those around us. Uh, I really believe this. As Christians, we are constructive when it comes to kingdom work or destructive. I, I, I have a hard time seeing gray in the middle of that. 
uh, in, in reality, we are obedient to the Scripture, to the call of Spirit, and, and the Spirit, and we are taking steps to do whatever it is that God has called us to do, and we are doing so in such a way that is reflective of the truth of His Word. That's constructive. Does that make sense? When we are not being constructive, we are disobedient. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, maybe I'm, I'm looking into it too far. But if you think about it, uh, for my wife and I, and you know, she says that my numbers uh, inflate oftentimes in this story. But I'm going to share it with you anyway. Um, I attended this church as a young person. Our family came here in 1979. That was a different century. <laughs> think about it. That was a different century. I did not have blonde highlights in 1979. Uh, the, the first time I ever saw my wife, she was right here with the altos in our little choir back in the day. The first time I ever laid eyes on her. Uh, I was baptized in this church. Uh, Jackie and I were married right here. Uh, we shared our vows uh, before a packed house. It was full all the way. I think some of the relatives were sitting in the kitchen back in the back. Um, and then I, I had a job. Uh, where I, I worked uh, all weekend, Saturday and Sunday. It's hard to go to church when you work on Sunday. Now, I work on Sundays now, but it's pretty easy to go to church. My employer is the best. Amen. Call it what it is. Uh, but I had a job where I worked on weekends, and, and so I wasn't able to go to church with Jackie because I worked every Saturday and every Sunday, and pretty soon she stopped going to church also because I wasn't going with her anymore. The next thing you know... I'm going to deflate the number so it's probably a little bit more accurate, sweetheart. We hadn't been in church for five years. It's probably longer than that. We hadn't been in church for five years. Now, here's the reality. We didn't twist off and go into some pit of uh, you know, drug and alcohol addiction. Uh, we didn't hold up any banks. Uh, we didn't murder anybody. Um, we were still, we loved one another. We were still uh, honored our marriage covenant. Covenant. Uh, we did a lot of off-roading on the weekends. Here's the thing in the wintertime, if a good storm system came, up, came in, Friday night we're in the Ram Charger heading for the mountains to go drive fresh powder snow. If you've never driven fresh powder snow, if you can come in about, well, there's about this much of it. If you can't see my hands around two, three feet of fresh snow that's just hit, it's so much fun to drive in. And, and now by this time, here's the reality. God had provided me with a different job. Monday through Friday. You know where I was on Sunday morning? Wheeling snow in the mountains. Driving rocks in the mountain. Or hitting mud out behind the hill. Uh, I was not in church. Do you know where my wife was on Sunday mornings? Not in church either. Why? I'm the head of my household. And she wants me to be the head of our household. She was with me. Now, I already said we didn't freak out and go crazy. But at the same time, we did not grow in our walk with Christ at all. I'm talking about me, right? I'm not talking about your story. I'm not trying to make you feel guilty or, or, or struggle with anything. But here's the reality. We didn't grow in our walk. Uh-oh, that was a we. Sorry, baby. We didn't teach anyone else anything about the truth of God's Word. Five years. I cannot remember sharing my faith with anybody during that time. Yet the reality is, I probably encountered more people on a daily basis that do not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior then, than I do now. Think about it. Most of the people, not everyone, but most of the people in my workplace today know Christ. That's the reality. At that time, I was working for a construction company in Fresno. And I'll be honest with you, very few of them knew Christ. I'm not stereotyping or, or being mean to them. My dad uh, was a framing contractor, pounded nails for years. Uh, you know, it's just what it is. It's what we did. It's what we do. Uh, and I'm sharing that story with you because prior to leaving and not attending church regularly, we were actively in church. Jackie and I were volunteers, and we worked with the uh, preteen kids right here at this church at that time. We took them to little events, 
shared Bible stories with them, talked to them about Jesus and how to ask him into our heart. We volunteered in vacation Bible school. Uh, at one point, I had so much fun in vacation Bible school, my aunt gave me a lifetime ban. I was no longer ever allowed to be a part of vacation Bible school, if she only knew. I'm sharing that with you because I really believe this. That five-year span, whatever it may have been, the time frame, I believe that my choice to be, call it what it is, disobedient and to stay continually disconnected from the church took away from the kingdom. There had to be people that God put in my path and I didn't <clears throat> love on them. There had to be things that God put on my heart and I chose not to act on them. Does that make sense? To me, that was a destructive time in my walk with Christ because I was not adding to the kingdom, therefore I was taking away. Since then, oh, you see how good you are? She started going to church by herself. She started going to church by herself, and the church she was going to had a brand new pastor there, and uh, she said, Ansel, you should come to church. You'll really like their new pastor. You notice it was not possessive. It wasn't our pastor. It was their pastor at that time. And the next thing you know, we're at a new members event, a dinner. Somebody stands up weeping and says, I feel led to minister and work with junior high kids the next Sunday. We were teaching junior high kids. <laughs> the next thing you know, somebody's the director of the youth ministry. The next thing you know, somebody's being licensed and ordained to the gospel ministry. Amen. Working with awesome people like you and your husband. Don't worry, I was talking to one person in particular back there. I look at this mustard seed and the smallest thing that we would just take for granted and not even think about can have such an impact for the kingdom. I would encourage you as we look at these things and we look at these scriptures, find out, man, where it is. Where is God calling me personally to plug in to His kingdom work? So often we think, well, I'm not skilled to do that. So often we think, I'm not, I'm not gifted to do that. So often we think, I don't have the talent, the ability to do that. And, and I think the struggle is we think that we all have to be Billy Graham, right? And while that's a cool thing and it's awesome, and, and that's an individual who was gifted in evangelism and led a lot of people to come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, he's only one dude. And he's deceased. Sometimes it takes a whole village of people to step into those big shoes that are left open. And the reality is, all of our strengths, our weaknesses, our abilities, and our talents, God pulls that stuff together to accomplish His kingdom work. He will take our strength he will take our weakness, more often times our weakness, and through Him do amazing and miraculous things through it. Just as that mustard plant with, which grows to be the largest plant in the garden with limbs strong enough to support birds grows from the smallest seed. You have access to people who do not know Christ that I might never meet. You have earned relationship with people who do not know Christ. A relationship that I have not earned. You have access to them. And you have earned the right to love them and help them hear little bits at a time the truth of Christ.
so that at some point, when they finally hear that still, small voice, that knocking in the background, they might be willing to open that door. And I'll allow Jesus to come into their heart. My Jeep rolled away. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thirty-three. We're going to wrap up the verses. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them. As much as they could understand, He did not say anything to them without using parable. But when He was alone with His own disciples, He explained everything. Here's the reality. We're all in different walks in this world. And He reveals what we need to hear at that point and at that time. He reveals what we are prepared to grasp and understand at that point and at that time. And as we are obedient, as we choose to be a constructive part of His kingdom work, He will continue to reveal more. I can't imagine I can't imagine not being in church with you guys on a Sunday morning. I can't even imagine it. You may not know this, I don't miss that many Sundays. And it's not because I'm not allowed to miss a Sunday. It's because I don't like to. I want to be here. I want to be in worship with the Lord. Amen. With the family. I don't want a new normal. My choice, my desire is Jesus. And I would hope that that is yours as well. Or that that's something that's growing for you. We're going to lean into some prayer. Let's pray together. Dear Lord God, help us to identify these parables and apply them in our own lives. That, they, that we would not hide your light, but that in fact we would put it on a stand. We would put your light, put you up high so that everyone would see and recognize your love, grace, mercy. Help us at the same time to recognize the importance of planting seeds, tending seeds, watering and harvesting, and understanding and recognizing that we might just be a part of that process, but that we would be obedient, we would look for opportunities to help others see the truth of Christ shining out through our life, and that no matter how frightening it is, when He opens a door and provides that opportunity, we would be obedient. Put actions to the calling and let that light shine. In the name of our Savior Jesus, we pray these things. Amen. Amen. At this time in our service, this is an open invitation. It is an opportunity for you personally to share any decision that God has placed on your life with this body. It could be that you're here this morning and perhaps you've been uh, thinking, praying, struggling with the idea of giving your life to Jesus, asking Jesus into your heart. This is a time to say, yes, I'm a sinner. I want to ask God's Son Jesus into my heart. Perhaps as a new believer or as a believer, maybe it's that next step of obedience that God has been placing on your heart. It could be that while watching Joy Beth and Annabelle be baptized, you're sitting here and recognizing, you know what? I need to be baptized. You can go home wet. It's okay. We've got plastic bags. We'll give them to you. There's no charge. Perhaps you've been struggling and praying and thinking about church membership. If God's calling you to be a member here, we'd love to have you. If He's calling you to be a member at another Bible-believing, Jesus-following church, that's awesome. If you are a member of that church, that's awesome. Do everything you can to support His ministry in that place. It could be that 
uh, as a Christian and maybe you've been baptized and you've been a member of a church for who knows how long and you might in fact, you could be you've been a member of that church so long you can't even remember the name of the place. <laughs> it could be that you're here this morning and you're thinking, you know what? I haven't shared my faith with anybody in years. It could be you're sitting here and you're recognizing, you know what? I have not been constructive in my walk with Christ. Today might be a day when God's just impressing on you the importance of rededicating your life. We rededicate our life as a Christian not because Jesus has left us or because God has failed us. That doesn't happen. We rededicate our life because we've chosen to be disobedient. And we're asking that God would help get us back on that, through that narrow gate and on that narrow path that leads to righteousness. It could be that you're here this morning and, and maybe the thing that you need is just to take a knee up here at the altar and lift up a prayer to God. That's what this time is set aside for. Those of you joining us uh, later on online can participate as well through the comments and private messages. And of course, here's the truth and you already know it. You can pray no matter where you are, right? Please stand as we lead into this time of invitation.